Okay, so teardown video of the Yuha DC power supply, a PS3010D. Looks like a, a typical cheap Chinese power supply. The only thing special about this one, the reason I bought it, it's uh, capable of 10 amps at 30 volt. Okay, what's that horrible noise? That's the power supply. Uh, it's a it's a noisy supply. There's no um, there's no fan control. There's obviously no load coming on. There's no voltage even coming out of it. Uh, but it uh, the fan just turns on hard. There's uh, no provisions in this design for uh, a variable fan, so uh, one thing you sacrifice when you're at the very bottom of the market, um, and it's it's actually it, it's annoying to be loud. So uh, out of box accuracy, uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, two volts here, obviously got the fluke. I've uh, calibrated it against my calibration source, and it's uh, it's accurate. So. Okay, so this is a, an ammeter test. I have a, a load resistor out of the picture here, but um, you can see that it's reading uh, 400 milliamps on the meter. The actual reading is uh, 500 milliamps. So the out of the box, the current meter is a little bit inaccurate. Okay, uh, down here in the display board, you can see a potentiometer. It's for the amp uh, reading, and uh, it's now reading point uh, it's reading four four amps, and the meter is reading four amps as well. So. I mean, it is actually possible to trim the uh, meter to be a bit more accurate. Okay, so unfortunately this power supply, at least as I got it, actually has a rather bad flaw. It uh, produces an incredible voltage spike uh, when the power sequence just so. Uh, right now it's setting about 5 volts, uh, 5 volts revision, running 5 volts. If you turn the power off, of course, it drops to zero. Um, but then if you turn it back on, turn it off, and then turn it back on, uh, you can see that there's just a, an incredible spike, 15 volts almost, and for a loud power supply that's actually completely unacceptable uh, because that would uh, quite nicely blow out and destroy anything you're actually trying to power up uh, unless it has a final product with some uh, final electronics protection. So, um, out of box, uh, unacceptable. Uh, and of course the question is, can this be fixed? And the short answer of course is yes. Okay, so uh, power supply is obviously opened up here. This is the uh, main control board for the power supply. You can see there's a capacitor sticking on the back here. It's been uh, just solder tacked. This actually solves the problem. A little more capacitance on a rail uh, results in a, a much more stable supply where it doesn't glitch up on uh, power transient. So let's take a look at the schematic and uh, see why this fixes the problem. Uh, the whole idea here is you have a power transformer and there's of course a bunch of windings on it. Uh, one set of windings here actually supplies the actual power that goes out to the output. Um, there's almost always another set of windings which provides uh, basically the control power supply. You basically want to power up your control loop circuitry separately and there's a bridge rectifier and then there's usually like a linear rectifier. In this case 7812 shown here. In fact that's the same one they use on the, on the power supply in the LM. A 431 also shown here. Now it's not quite wired up the same way in my unit, but the concept holds. Uh, any linear power supply basically is going to have uh, the, the pass transistors here. There's going to be then uh, two air amplifiers, uh, one air amplifier for voltage, one air amplifier for current. And basically they control the turning on of this pass transistor. And what you really want, of course, is to make sure the pass transistor here is only turned on to the amount that you want it to be turned on. What was happening on the supply uh, was basically the control voltage was uh, disappearing too quickly and the op amp essentially was outputting a, an erroneous signal which caused the pass transistors to turn full hard on. Obviously not a good behavior. Uh, now the solution for this particular unit, uh, and I haven't done any sort of exhaustive loop analysis or anything, but uh, uh, tacked a bit more capacitance onto the, the 12 volt rail coming out of the, uh, the linear regulator what that does is it holds up the op amp and keeps it powered up long enough so that uh, once the main power goes away, uh, the pass transistors don't go into a funny state. Okay, so one last thing I want to do before I actually put this power supply back together was change the binding post out. You can see there's some new ones here. Uh, the old ones uh, were, they were adequate, but uh, they were a little flimsy for uh, what I thought was a 10 amp power supply. So really easy to buy different binding posts off uh, various distributors. You can certainly get them quite easily. Okay, definitely some build issues, unfortunately. Uh, this is a uh, stud that goes to the chassis ground. Now you can see when I wiggle the wire, the stud's loose, which, of course, is a bit of a safety issue. Now, fortunately, the front panel uh, chassis ground and the rear is actually connected together. It's by solder, but the chassis can float because what they forgot here was a locking washer or a split ring washer. That's pretty basic. So, 
Unfortunately, as you kind of expect when you uh, pay uh, modest amounts of money, you definitely should open these things up, uh, make sure they're actually uh, made it in shipping, and uh, fix it. So, I mean, this is easy to fix, right? You just pick, pick a washer out of your uh, junk box and uh, put it on. But Okay, well, one thing you notice really quickly here, I'll just put a pencil in for scale, uh, it's just a huge transformer, and that makes a lot of sense, because uh, if you're trying to do a linear power supply, and you need to have 10 amps, uh, that's actually quite an appropriately sized transformer. So, good to see actually. Uh, that's um, one promising bit of this kit. Uh, the fan here, of course, blowing onto the plate. The plate has uh, four transistors here, which would be like series pass transistors, which will dissipate the load um, in a linear fashion. Uh, over here, of course, we have the uh, full wave rectifier uh, on the secondary side of the transformer. The board here, I'll take a close photograph of that in a second, but it's uh, just what you'd expect in terms of um, being a linear regulator controller. And on the front here, uh, the meters, the current meter and the voltage meter. Uh, a board down here for the potentiometers that control the voltage. And then tucked down there, of course, the power switch and the banana jacks. So construction's really standard on these. These seem to be all built in about the same way. There's nothing particularly remarkable here. Okay, uh, here's the control board. Uh, you can just absolutely visualize how this power supply works. It's such a straightforward design. A uh, couple op amps here, they're um, LM2904s from a TI. Uh, they've been socketed, which is a bit unusual. A socket actually introduces a bit of unreliability in an assembly, so I'm not quite sure where they spend a little money money in that. A um, couple of uh, relays here, those of course click uh, the secondary windings into the right range as you go through the voltages don't want to overload your linear pass transistors because they have to dissipate that heat, so uh, any of these designs will have uh, some relays here. The filter cap actually is quite large, uh, nicely um, uh, nicely glued down. Uh, it is of course from a no-name Chinese vendor I've never heard of before. Uh, always been a source of reliability unfortunately. Uh, and uh, otherwise just a, a really straightforward single-sided control. Um, you could absolutely you know, service this assembly uh, even with schematics, you can actually beep it out in a second. Solder quality, actually okay. It uh, looks like some wave solder, the main, main uh, board here, which is uh, nice to see. Uh, some hand soldering here where the wires go in, but uh, you really can't prevent that unless you put a connector on the board, so that's acceptable. And uh, that's good. Uh, hand soldering otherwise can be a problem. Okay, well, if you got it this far in the video, you of course might be thinking, geez, what a terrible power supply. Um, actually, quite frankly, it'd be very hard to buy all these parts uh, and build your own power supply. Um, there's definitely some problems with these supplies, uh, but quite frankly, the beauty of being an electrical engineer is you can actually go through and uh, fix the problems. So, I, you know, I got the control loop problem, but that was easy. Uh, sorted down circuitry, fixed that. Wasn't so keen on the binding post, you know, that was more of a person, uh, personal taste thing, but I, I easily ordered some new binding posts, fixed those up. Uh, of course, the um, the ground, the chassis ground was loose here actually, they forgot to put a lock washer in, um, that's a little less forgivable, but quite frankly, uh, it's quite a solvable problem. So, you know, if you're going to buy one of these cheap Chinese power supplies, um, they're actually a pretty good buy. I, mean, I would recommend though, you probably open them up actually, and uh, fix any of the deficiencies you might find from a design viewpoint, um, and then fix up the circuitry for the output control if that's of concern, or if you're really... Uh, Oh, well, as long as you're aware of it, you know, right? You don't want to destroy your prototype. So yeah, this is uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is the Yuha uh, PS three zero one zero D.